In today's video, I'll be building the J27 and G18 boats. As with the boats in the previous video, I have not been able to find any information on these boats, so I'll be relying on the information that is provided with the kit. This is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Both types of the boats will be constructed out of plastic and photo etch parts, however they are simpler than the boats in the previous video. The photo etch parts are a direct replacement for the plastic cabins that are molded onto the deck. As such, the plastic cabins will need to be cut off. Fortunately, the decking around the cabins is smooth. This will make it easy to file down the remaining plastic from the cabin after it has been cut off. If there was detail that needed to be preserved, then you would have to go through the extra effort of protecting it. In that case, I would have covered the details with tape and used that tape as a barrier between the detail and the file. The deck around this cabin is also smooth, so that makes it easy for this boat as well. There are some smaller details molded onto the deck, forward and aft of the cabin. I'll need to avoid damaging those, but I don't think that will be much of a problem. Although these plastic cabins look quite good, I appreciate that photo etch replacements have been provided. The main advantage is that the photo etch has openings for the windows. This will give it a much cleaner look. In previous videos, you would have seen this hull floating around. It is one of the hulls for a G18 boat that I constructed to help with aligning the stands that were installed much earlier in the build. In hindsight, I probably should have held off installing those stands until now, but I suppose it doesn't make much of a difference. I just had to keep track of the hull and not lose it, and that's why I kept it on the ship. If I misplaced the entire aroma, then I would have had a bigger problem. The holes for the J27 boats consist of two halves split down the center line and a deck with the cabin molded on. As previously mentioned, the cabin will be removed and replaced with photo etch. The construction of the G18 boats is similar to that of the J27 boats. The holes in two pieces split down the center line with a third piece for the deck. Once again, the cabin will be cut off and replaced with photo etch. The boats constructed in this video will be installed in Roma in these locations. To begin, I'll prepare the plastic parts for boat J27. The first step is, as always, to simply cut them off the sprue. Two of these types of boats need to be constructed and all three of the plastic components will be used in their construction. Next, I will remove the parts for the G18 boats. Once again, they consist of three parts, two for the hull and one for the deck. In this type, there are three boats to be built. However, I have already constructed one of the hulls. The hull that I had previously constructed was built because I needed it to align the stands that I installed in an earlier phase of the construction of this ship. You would have seen it sitting on the deck in several of my previous videos. The preparation of these plastic parts are essentially the same. The next step is to clean up the excess bits of plastic still attached to them I start by clipping the excess down as far as possible, leaving only a little bit of plastic at the edge of the part. The remaining plastic can then be sanded down with a file. I'm not going to completely clean the parts at this time. I will do that once the two halves of the hull are stuck together. I do need to prepare the two halves of the hull before they are glued together. So I'll run a file of the joint line to ensure that the halves will make good contact with each other. The decks also need a bit of cleaning up. I'm not looking for perfection, just a clean flowing line and a good fit in the hull. The test for the G18 boats shows that the deck fits in nice and snugly. It doesn't even fall out when held upside down. I'm quite happy with that. Same process needs to be completed for the deck on the J27 boats. Of course, on these deck pieces, the majority of the superstructure will be removed. In fact, the entire superstructure will be removed, leaving only a few minor deck details in place. With the parts sufficiently cleaned up, they can be glued together. As previously stated, I've done minimal cleanup on the hulls at this point. I just want them to be in a good enough state to be pressed together. So I press them together dry, and once I'm happy with their position, I use extra thin plastic cement applied to the inside of the hull to glue them together. The same process is then repeated for all of the hulls. That's four in total, and that excludes the one that I had already constructed. Some time is required for the holes to dry before I can work on them. While that is happening, I will prepare the decks for photo etch by removing the plastic cabins. 
It always feels a bit wrong to start hacking it apart like this, but knowing that the photo etch will be an improvement helps. Since there is no detail on the deck around the cabin, I'll clip it down to around one millimeter off the deck and then file off the rest. Since this plastic is not designed to be removed, I do need to be careful not to overstress the plastic and cause it to snap or deform. Even if I do take it too far, it should not be too difficult to correct because the surface around is smooth. It'll just be an annoyance. Now that the cabin has been removed, I'll file down the excess so that the deck is flat. On the J27 decks, there is a bit of detail just forward and after where the cabin used to be. I need to be careful not to damage it. It is really fortunate that the deck is otherwise smooth. If there was detail on the deck that needed to preserved, I would have had to try and cover it and it can get quite tricky. The same process is then repeated on the three decks for the G18 boats. After removing the cabin, I smooth off the edges with a round file. All that I'm trying to do is clean up the corners a bit. There are a few bits of plastic that are still hanging on. Once I'm happy with the state of the hulls, I can glue the deck in place. As with the boats in the previous video, Trumpeter did not mold a floor, so I created one using a piece of card. Without this card, you'll be able to see all the way down to the bottom of the hull, and that would not look right. I really don't understand this oversight. It would have been very easy to include a floor in the kit. When installing the floor, I ensured that there is sufficient space at the edge of the deck for the deck to fit the hull without it being obstructed by the card. This is necessary for the part to fit and for the glue to have a surface on which to form a bond. Unfortunately, these decks are a little bit too small for the hull. There is a very small gap that runs around the perimeter. It's just big enough to be a problem and it's something that will be noticed. So I'm going to try and fill it with putty. I'll do that at a later stage once the glue has had a chance to dry. While the hulls for the J27 boats are dry, I'll work on the G18 hulls. As I said at the beginning of the video, there are some plastic connection points that need to be cleaned up. I'll just use a file to do that. And then I'll smooth off everything with a 1000 grit sanding sponge to get a good finish. Now to start working on the photo etch. First I'll fold the cabin for the G18 boats. This is a small structure that is little more than an open bottom box. All this requires are tweezers to fold it into the correct shape. I'm using extra thin super glue applied with a piece of wire to the corners of the structure from the inside. This way the glue can be applied without any marks being visible from the exterior. Up next is the J27 cabin. This is a considerably more complicated part, but the same principles apply. There are some paint in these parts from previous rounds of painting that I want to remove before applying the super glue. I prefer the glue to be in direct contact with the metal so that it can form a stronger bond. If the glue were applied on top of the paint, then the bond will be weakened. To remove the paint, I'll give the parts a bath in acetone. Now that the parts are clean, they can be folded and glued together. The process is the same as for the small cabin on the G18 boats. The cabins are a bit more delicate, but they are easy to fold with tweezers. The part of this folding that I find the trickiest is holding the surfaces together while I apply the glue. It can be difficult to keep everything in place and not stick a finger or a tool to the part in the process. After a bit of back and forth and getting glued to the part a few times, I am able to get the job done. My last concern with these cabins is that they will not properly fit over the hole in the deck, so I'm going to do a quick test fit. As you can see, it does cover the hole quite nicely. That is a relief. That could have been a pain to fix. Since the cabins for both the G18 and J27 boats fit well, I don't have to worry about touching that up. But I still need to deal with the rather large gaps around the deck on the J27 boats. The J27 hulls have sufficiently dried, so I can now work on filling those gaps. To fill the gaps, I'm using Tamiya putty. This putty can be dissolved using a lacquer thinner. So the approach that I will take is to apply it liberally with a toothpick and try to push it into the gap. There is definitely going to be a large excess, so once I've gotten it into the gap as best as I can, I'll use the lacquer thinner to dissolve the excess and brush it away. This is going to be messy. 
To remove the putty, I'll use an old paintbrush wet with lacquer thinners. This is Tamiya lacquer thinner. While the lacquer thinner will dissolve the putty, it will not harm the plastic or the glue. If you wanted to, you could submerge the plastic in the lacquer thinner and it wouldn't harm the plastic. Something that I haven't been doing is asking people to like and subscribe. What I've come to understand is that that is a bit of a mistake if you're trying to grow a channel. Well, it's probably also a mistake for an established channel. I guess it's a bit like advertising. Anyways, apparently you need to have a strong call to action to motivate people to like and subscribe. So here I go. According to my channel analytics, only 14% of my viewers are subscribed. By liking and subscribing, you will help make these videos more visible on YouTube and in turn help grow this channel. By growing this channel, you'll motivate me to create better content for you to watch. So do it for yourself. Like and subscribe. A lot of thinners and mess later have the effect that I am looking for. You can see a thin white line around the perimeter of the deck. I think that helps a lot. Unfortunately, that was quite a process and it needs to be repeated for the other boat. While I was preparing the hulls for the boats, the super glue on the cabin had a chance to dry and they can now be handled. That means it is time to install the roof rails. While the roof rails are very small, they aren't really that difficult to install. The best technique that I have found is to apply a little bit of extra thick super glue to a few of the stands to tack the part in place. And while it is being gently held, reinforce the bond with extra thin super glue applied with a wire. This is one of those things where if you don't have a technique, it can be quite a difficult task. But once you've figured out a technique for doing this, you can do it quickly, easily, and neatly. Parts this small are delicate, and once installed, you do have to continue to be aware of them. Because even after gluing them on, they are still quite easy to knock off. This is one of those parts that I just want to get onto the ship as quickly as possible. Once it is on the ship, there's less chance of them being knocked off, simply because you don't have to handle them anymore. This is as far as construction can progress without painting, so it is now time to paint. I will start with XF78 Wooden Deck Tan. This color is only going to be used on the inside of the hulls for the G18 boats. I'm spraying the inside first because it is easier to spray the outside of the hull without overspray landing on the inside. Painting in this order will enable me to avoid some masking. I'm also painting the underside of the decks, which is possibly a bit overkill because you'll never see underneath them, but there is a small part in the superstructure that extends downwards underneath the cabin, and I don't want that to be visible and in a different color. It probably wouldn't have been visible if I painted it just from above, but this is quick and easy, so why not just flip them over and paint both sides? That way I know that everything that can possibly be seen is painted in the correct color. At the bow of the deck, there is a small patch of light gray. I want this to have a good, clean and consistent finish that matches the rest of the boat. So I'm going to go through the trouble of individually masking off each of the decks. It is a little bit more time consuming, but will enable me to ensure that the angles are all consistent across the three boats and that I get a good, clean line. I don't want them to look somewhat haphazard with ugly paintwork, so I'm going to put in the extra effort. Once masked, it is a simple thing to paint that little bit of light gray on the bow. This is the same color as the light gray camouflage for the ship. Staying with the light gray, the remaining components can be painted. Once again, I am painting the inside of the cabins in light gray because the unpainted metal is shiny and I don't want it to be visible through the windows. Once the cabins and hulls have been fully painted, I will complete the construction. Painting the interior might be unnecessary, it probably is unnecessary, but it's a small thing to do and not much effort, so I figure why not. It's one of those things that if done correctly, nobody will ever notice, but it's also one of those things that if not done correctly, it can detract from the model. After painting the inside of the cabins, I flip them over to paint the exterior. Although I did say that I spread the inside of the hulls first to avoid some masking, one of the things that I want to do is have the very top of the hull painted in light grey. I don't want it to be in the wood colour, I want it to have a lip in light grey around the perimeter of the hull. I don't know if that is correct, but I think it will look better with that effect. I'm placing masking tape on the inside of the hull to protect it from overspray. 
masking doesn't need to be very accurate. It just needs to be in a place such that the overspray does not make contact with the inside of the hole. This is another small detail that's probably not necessary, but it is something I like to do. After giving the paint some time to dry, the clear coat can be applied. This is a gloss acrylic varnish. The varnish has two purposes. It will protect the parts from scratches and will also give the parts a smooth surface for the panel line to flow over. This will help with getting the panel line to the details and make it easier to remove it from the places where there is not much detail. For this process, it is important to use acrylic varnish. The acrylic varnish will not be harmed by the panel line or the solvent that is used to remove the panel line. If you use an enamel-based varnish, then the panel line and turpentine will also dissolve the varnish and you'll end up with a big mess. After the gloss coat has dried for a few hours, the panel line can be applied. Since a gloss varnish has been applied, the removal of the panel line is very easy. So you don't have to worry about where the panel line is applied. I focus on applying the panel line to the areas with detail. I'm trying to keep the black panel line off of the brown paint. I'll use brown panel line on the brown paint. The only parts with both light gray and brown paint are these decks. And it's only the circle on the bow where I'll apply the black panel line. At this point, these parts are looking very messy, but that will not be a problem. If anything, when I'm done, you'll probably think I have not left enough panel line on these boats. The excess panel line will now be removed with mineral turpentine and an old paintbrush. The only consideration at this stage is how much panel line you want removed. I prefer to remove the majority of the panel line. Even with a little bit applied, it will still have a good effect and will help make the boats look more realistic. I don't like a heavily weathered effect. I think the heavily weathered effect works better in a diorama where you are portraying the ship in a war-torn state, possibly with battle damage. For the way that I display these models, that's on a stand and display cabinet, I prefer them to look like they are well-maintained ships sitting in port. A number of battleships, mainly from the US, still exist as museum ships. And from those, you can see that a ship maintained in port actually stays very clean. It is because of these ships that I don't think a heavily weathered ship is a very realistic representation. Well, that is unless it's been very active in battles and that is where a diorama makes sense. So I would say this very light weathering that I go for is probably more realistic than a very heavily weathered model for the way in which I display them. For the deck tan painted parts of the hull, I'm using brown panel line to give them some life. The brown panel line will help put a very slight texture onto the paint. It's going to be quite marginal because as I say, I do have a tendency to remove the majority of the panel line, but I think it could help the boats a bit. The process is exactly the same as for the black panel line. I don't want to get the brown panel line onto the gray paint. I prefer black panel line on the gray paint, and the brown panel line on the brown paint. The black panel line is used to simulate grime and bring out some of the detail and the brown panel line is used to simulate the texture of the wood and of course bring out detail. After letting the panel line dry, well really mostly letting the mineral turpentine evaporate off overnight, the parts can be assembled. First I'll complete the assembly of the G18 plastic parts. I apply extra thin plastic cement to the inside of the hull with the deck in place. I'm trying to avoid the glue eating into the paint. Plastic cement will dissolve paints, but if you don't disturb the surface while the glue is drying, it will probably be okay. Once the glue is applied, I place the deck into the hole and press it in place. There's a very gentle curve on the deck that is preventing them from sitting in place properly. Since plastic cement is slow drying, I need to press the deck down until the glue is strong enough to hold. To do this, I'm rolling some tape that I can then put on the deck and tape down to press the deck into place. Once the glue is dry, I'll remove the tape. While the G18 holes are drying, I will install the cabins on the J27 holes. The most important thing to get right during this process is to make sure that the cabin is straight and correctly lined up over the large hole that is in the middle of the deck. I'll start with the aft of the cabin because it's open and the opening needs to be correctly aligned with the hole, otherwise it will look wrong. Once I have it in position dry, I hold it with my fingers and use extra thin superglue to permanently glue the cabin to the deck. 
Once the back of the cabin is bonded, I move to the front to ensure that it is straight and centered before applying the glue. The cabin held firmly from both ends, I reinforce the bond by applying glue down both sides of the cabin. The process is then repeated for the second J27 boat. After giving the glue on the plastic parts for the J18 boat some time to dry, the masking tape is removed and construction can continue. A similar process to that for the J27 boats is followed, except it is a bit simpler because the cabin is smaller. I position the cabin on its platform dry and maneuver it into place. Once correctly positioned, I apply extra thin superglue to the inside of the cabin to bond it to the deck. This process is completed three times. The stands now need to be constructed. This process is essentially the same for all the boats. There are three stands for each boat in a variety of different shapes and sizes. It's just a matter of selecting the correct stands to match the shape of each hull and keeping track of the order for installation on the ship. In the previous video, I painted all of the stands so I can move straight on to applying the panel line. I've not applied gloss varnish to these parts. They are small and simple enough for that not to be necessary. The color code I used is also an acrylic paint, so I don't have to worry about the panel line or mineral turpentine eating into it. The excess panel line can be removed in the same fashion as with the boats themselves. That is using turpentine and a paintbrush to gently remove the excess. This brings us to the final part of preparation before installation on the ship. That is matting everything down with the matte varnish. These boats are a bit awkward to hold. So the first thing I'll do is put a little bit of tape on them and use that to hold them while I spray them. I'm spraying these parts with Mr. Color 182. Mr. Color 182 has a very strong matte effect. So it's something that you'll need to be quite careful with or you'll overdo it. In the comments of an earlier video, I was asked to film a close up of the finished parts. When I did that for this video, it was a very grainy texture from this varnish on the finished boats that I didn't like. Now, when viewing this model in person, the Mr. Color 182 varnish looks perfectly good. It's only a problem when using extreme magnification, so please keep that in mind. The only reason why I did what I'm about to tell you is because I filmed the model so close up that I could notice the graining and because I'm filming this model for YouTube. If that was not the case, I would have not have noticed this and I would have continued oblivious and happy. But I saw what I saw, so I felt compelled to correct it. To do that, I resprayed the entire model with Mr. Color Leveling Thinner to smooth down the matte coat. This resulted in a glossy effect on some parts of the model, so I then sprayed the whole model with a thin coat of Tamiya XF86. The model now looks good with both the naked eye and a 10x zoom, which is quite ridiculous. These boats are around 40 millimeters, so when you blow it up to 400 millimeters, you're basically looking at a single one of these boats being almost the size of the entire Roma model. But I think they hold up quite well, even under that level of magnification. You can see those images at the end of the video. Now that these parts have been sprayed in their final coat, the installation can begin. Unlike the previous video, all of these boats are installed in the open and there's plenty of space to work, so that's nice. The only thing that needs to be kept track of is that the stands are in the correct order. For whatever reason, that seems to be something I'm not good at and somehow I always get the order mixed up. Fortunately, I do test fits before gluing anything down so it's not too difficult to identify those errors and correct them, and get everything back into the correct order. When installing stands, the most important thing to do is to install the outer stands before the inner stand. You need to create a straight line with the stands, otherwise the boat will not sit correctly. To do this, I first stick down the forward and aft most stands and then give the glue a chance to dry. For these stands, I'm using the port side of the ship as a reference. Although the stands are slightly different, they should still be in alignment with their mirror set. After giving the forward and aft most stands a moment to dry, I check that they are securely tacked in place so that they don't move while I install the middle stand. While the glue for the middle stand is still wet, I place the boat on top of the stands and maneuver the middle stand underneath the boat such that the boat sits snugly in all the stands. There are five boats to install in this video and the process is identical for all of them. In some cases there are markings on the deck that can be used as reference points for the installation of the stands. 
but the process is essentially the same throughout. Start with the outer stands, once they are tacked in place, install the middle stand, place the boat into the stands, adjust the middle stand so the boat falls into position and sits snugly. This brings us to the end of the video. There will be one more video on constructing boats, and that will be for the remaining eight simpler boats. After the boats, there's only rigging and aircraft left to do. I'm leaning towards installing the rigging off the boats, but that might change. Finally, just a reminder for anyone who is interested, at the very end of this video is a short close-up of the boats constructed in this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.